Well, let's have a look at State of Decay 2, originally released for Xbox consoles and Windows PC in 2018 by Undead Labs. A follow-up to the massively successful State of Decay, Part 2 has also been a smash hit with well over 10 million copies sold. A third game is currently in the work, so keep your eyes peeled for that. State of Decay 2 is in short a zombie survival game, reminiscent of the Walking Dead franchise. It's played from the third person perspective with an emphasis on scavenging for materials and supplies. Of course, there is a lot more to it. Not only do you need to find materials and supplies, you'll need to find a home for your community to live in, manage and balance commodities such as fuel, food and medical supplies, while also keeping folks safe and content. You meet other groups, some friendly and some not so much. You'll trade, build relationships, recruit and fight alongside them. The game was remastered into the Juggernaut edition in 2020 and now includes all previous DLC so when you buy this one you're getting everything you need to get the most from the game. State of Decay 2 can be enjoyed entirely as a single player game but also in co-op with friends even across platforms and was awarded best co-op game for Xbox in 2018. As for PC system requirements you will need at least Windows 10 but most modern machines shouldn't have any trouble running this one. Let's dig into the campaign and main aspects of the game, starting with survivors. They can vary significantly in looks, personality, background, and voice, and can have a variety of skill sets such as gardening, carpentry, shooting, fighting, computers, and even medicine. Skills improve as you use them over time, and when they plateau they can be specialized to give some extra bonuses. You can also learn more advanced skills from books and outposts that benefit the community as a whole. Their entire wardrobe and loadouts can be completely customized however you like. So, what's your favorite melee weapon and loadout? I tend to really like suppressed carbines and blades. Good one. Keep them coming. Now, what kind of things can you do during the game? Well, you can kill plague hearts, which are sources of plague carrying zombies and prevent you from claiming outposts in the surrounding area. You can clear infestations of zombies that hoard together and cause havoc. You can scavenge for weapons, clothing, items, and other materials. You can meet other communities and answer radio calls from strangers, build relationships, trade, help, or even fight them. You can even recruit survivors into your community, pretty slick if you ask me. What's your favorite thing to do in State of Decay 2? I kind of have fun dismembering zombies with bladed weapons to be honest, but hey that's just me. One of the most interesting game mechanics involved in growing a community is base building and management. You'll have a choice of quite a few options from cement factories, dinosaur themed gas stations and anything in between each with their own unique perks, amenities, and free spaces from which to build and customize. One important aspect of base management is balancing materials needed to keep your community running, from fuel, food, and medicine, to gas, repair kits for vehicles, ammunition for defense, and a few others. You build facilities that allow for running water and electricity, sleeping quarters, guard towers, lounges, and gardens are among a few of the choices. Claiming outposts are another option, they act as a remote base and allow you to switch out your tired, injured, or plague infested characters, access your storage, provide extra benefits such as local scouting, beds, or even supplies to help keep your community running. What's your favorite home base? I really like Mike's Concrete in Drucker County, it has a little bit of everything with plenty of room for expansion. Moving on to the next game mode, Heartland offers a very similar gameplay style as a campaign but with a simpler story driven experience where you can't choose your base map or even survivors but it offers a much greater challenge with its higher level of difficulty heartland takes place between state of decay one and two and revisits trumbull valley and many of its residents can anyone hear me is anyone out there and last but not least the daybreak game mode has you surviving against seven waves of zombie attacks lasting about five minutes each with a short break in between to rearm, pick up supply drops and build and repair walls. It's best suited for co-op play so you can coordinate with up to seven other players instead of just a few AI bots when you're playing alone. The basic premise here is that you're tasked with defending a base and a technician while he works on deploying red talent assets. Here you'll also earn points towards unlockable items to be used in your next attempt. At first, I felt like the graphics were a little dated, but as I played on I really felt like the game looked great. The landscapes are really well put together and there's a fair amount of detail to be found. The game has even received some graphical updates since release, and honestly, you can tell. A huge surprise was the animation. Some really good examples such as when characters are attacking or being attacked has been really well put together. Honestly, it's, it's pretty impressive. 
The sounds of shooting, stabbing, and cleaving off body parts while curbing the local zombie population has been really well put together and feels genuine. While voice acting is pretty good overall, it's not spectacular, but nothing bad either, and it all fits the theme of the game really nicely. I wonder if there are long-term biological effects from exploring plague territory. The soundtrack is a high point and it's extremely well put together, featuring over 30 songs that really help set the mood. The mostly slow and winding music does a great job of filling the voids between encounters and provides a nice ambiance alongside the screamers, ferals, and juggernauts gathering their minions. On its face, there isn't a whole lot of story here. There was a zombie apocalypse and you need to fight for your very survival. Once you start to piece together the many varied and interesting backgrounds of each of the survivors, things really start to fill in and take life. There's a lot of small bits of storytelling to be found throughout the game, just not a lot to go on when you first start unless you play the original State of Decay. That being said, honestly, I can't really say I was disappointed in what the game offered. I had fun with this one, running over zombies, smashing and beheading, scavenging, sneaking around stealthily, and interacting with fellow survivors. Unfortunately, I did find that the game kind of just tosses you into the river without a paddle. While it's not supremely difficult, an in-depth tutorial on the ins and outs would have been plenty useful as there are a few of the basic game mechanics requiring explanation. The in-game how-tos and tutorials are just a little lacking. The control scheme is pretty good though and the game plays great for the most part. I did have some issues trying to finish off zombies or picking up loot and accidentally starting a conversation with another survivor. Not always a big deal, but when you're in the middle of combat it can be a little painful. I'm also not a fan of the terrible vehicle controls. While simple in nature, they're far too touchy using a keyboard and mouse. The gas pedal and steering wheels are basically like on-off switches, so consider yourself warned. A few quality of life improvements will go a long way here. A single playthrough of the campaign is likely to take between 15 and 20 hours, depending on how much sightseeing you're planning on doing. There are also four completely different leadership paths to work towards, as well as four totally unique maps to explore. You'll also learn legacy boons for completing the game, which are very significant bonuses. You can also save your favorite characters from completed games, and they can both be used for future playthroughs. All in all, there are plenty of reasons to hop back in and keep playing. The Juggernaut Edition also includes the Heartland and Daybreak DLC packages, which could easily add yet another 15 or 20 hours of gameplay or more. And if you really like the game, you could easily spend 100 hours here. Despite a few shortcomings, I was really impressed with State of Decay 2 overall. The gameplay is fun and full of options to enjoy the game as you see fit. There's plenty to see and do and should keep you busy for quite a while, so you get your money's worth for sure. For anyone who's played the first game, enjoys killing zombies, or just anything in the looter shooter genre, you can't really go wrong here. This is Chris at Talon Gaming reminding you to help control the zombie population. Have your zombies spayed or neutered. Goodbye everybody.